There was no storm at that time, no wind, no rain, no thunder, no, no nothing. And at that point, uh, I got out of the car. You thought the coast was clear? Absolutely. No. There was no lightning? Nothing. There was no thunder? Nothing. You get out of the car. What do you remember after that? I remember being in a place uh, very comfortable, very dark, but suspended. And I remember that all of the troubles and stresses that I deal with on a regular basis relative to finances and my children's well-being and the, I remember them all being relieved from me, just taken away from me. And not just taken away from me, but also assured that it would be okay, let go, it'll be managed, it'll be taken care of. That sounds like you died. I believe I did. And I believe, uh, although it may have been a short period of time, and, and I'm thankful for the folks that revived me, um, yeah, I believe I did. He was knocked to the ground. That would earn him a gash on the head, which doctors closed with staples. He remembers feeling like he was drowning. You are, you are in, you are coming to in extraordinary pain. Excruciating. Do you remember what that felt like? It's very difficult to, to, to describe, but basically I felt paralyzed, but in excruciating pain as if I was on fire, my whole body. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I later learned, um, a week and a half later when I was able to, to, to understand what happened um, by my partner that uh, I was in fact on fire um, and they were able to put it out but I believe my Kevlar vest, the bulletproof vest, actually saved me that evening because it was able to suppress some of the oxygen so I didn't completely en engulf. Stan showed us how you can put a finger through the spot the lightning bolt tore through his Kevlar vest. My radio was clipped onto here. He believes the lightning was attracted by the radio that rested at the top of the vest, traveled down the side and across the bottom and out near his right hip. Only his patrol partner, Ed Weber, remembers anything about it. Your partner, your partner went through hell that night. He did, and um, not only that, after the fact, and it wasn't to the point where he and his wife visited me in the hospital, where I truly understood what, what happened. Because, I mean, clearly he was there. And, I mean, he gave me, a, he gave me the, the lowdown on exactly, blow by blow, what happened. And it, it, it amazed me because instinctively he thought that, it, you know, he, he heard a bang, uh, similar to a gun, shotgun possibly, and he thought, in fact, that somebody had shot me and that he was next. So training kicks in and he bails out the door and he draws his service weapon and he takes cover. And as he assesses the area, he continues to call out to me and I'm not responsive. Do you think about, why didn't I die? Do you allow your brain to go there? Um, I've had a lot of time to really assess what happened. And uh, I'm not uh, I'm a spiritual person per se, uh, you know. But I got to tell you, from that evening and that experience that I had in the darkness, um, it's changed my perspective on a lot of things. My message to my coworkers, my family, and my friends when they're facing problems that in my view, not that big of a problem, and they're, and they're stressing over it, and it's something that, you know, there's an easy resolution to it, as opposed to being struck by lightning.